Hello and welcome to episode two of Against the Grain. In this episode, I'd like to focus on the subject of laid crop. Is it really a way of determining if a crop circle is genuinely paranormal or if it's just man-made? How accurate is the research into laid crop? For many years now, I have considered this to be a very difficult area and not many people know the intricacies of how confusing it can be. Now when the first crop circle was reported this season, I noticed immediately that Charles Mallet had reported he'd found broken stems and therefore had concluded that the formation was man-made. I called Charles on Skype and had a conversation with him, during which time we discussed known man-made examples from TV shows that we've both indeed taken part of, and I became even more confused by how Charles was responding to the questions I was putting to him. Have a look at the conversation and see what you think. Thanks for joining me, Charles. Uh, as you know, I'm in Mexico at the moment, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you about visiting this new formation at Cheryl. Um, you've, you've been there, you've made a grand examination, you've posted some, some great photographs uh, comparing the uh, formation mm -hmm. that's at Cheryl with the ancient aliens demonstration that we took part in in that show a couple of years back. That was a really interesting test, actually, and it was it was kind of definitive in a sense of what human mechanics do relative to what we understand to be the genuine anomalous phenomena. So that was a really useful test and especially when comparing it with something like this circle we've just had. So I added it to my page to give people a bit of reference material. So the test that Charles is referring to here is taken from an episode of Ancient Aliens where three expert crop circle makers were asked to recreate a formation that had appeared back in 2005 at Golden Ball Hill. Let's have a look at how they got on. Okay, let's do it. So you're starting on the ring. John Lundberg and his team begin by measuring out the design using a tape measure. This one here. After determining where to place the edges, they use their wooden stock stompers to shuffle their way across the upright stems to create the desired pattern. Okay, going. Just worth noting, Gary, actually, that the people that made the ancient alien circle and numerous others, these are regarded as the best, the best yeah. crop circle makers, human crop circle makers on the planet. They get commissioned and flown all over the world to do circles for movies, TV, commercials, the whole thing, and they get well paid for it. Yeah, I think that's really, really helpful because because I think I think that our views will probably differ slightly because I've got some questions about the condition of what they did when they did that test and the conditions of the flowers and indeed, I mean, I can see the breaks that you've shown at the, uh, the bottom of the stems. Did you notice that there are any consistent crushing marks that would be consistent with boards every kind of step? Because I couldn't see any pictures like that. And my friend went there yesterday and took some pictures and video and we couldn't see any kind of scraping or crushing or flowers knocked off the heads, which I would think would be consistent with that mechanical process. In, in the ancient aliens um, crop circle, those plants were much more mature, you know, they were at the end of their flowering cycle and the plants were much more rigid and stiff, therefore the flowers came off much, much easier. Um, so flipping um, forward to 2017, this one, the first one of the year, yeah, I bent down immediately when I got um, to the edge of the circle and the first plants, half dozen plants I looked at um, were broken at the base and then I tracked along the edge of the perimeter um, of the main circular element of this crop circle. And like you just mentioned, actually, you know, you expect if it's mechanically made by people, then obviously they're using some kind of mechanical device in their fur to plank of wood or whatever, and they're kind of, you would expect this crush, 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 producing um, a, a repetitive, coherent pattern of damage over the circle and I, I had a good walk around for half an hour in there examined pretty much all areas of the circle and along the edges I did see what I would recognize as a crush uh, as, uh, and a kind of a scrape where the um, board or whatever it was had dragged along the stem 
and occasionally gone back and some um, some flowers, probably a relatively small percentage, because these plants are still fresh, young, and the flowers are attached pretty well. Um, I would say overall, looking at this circle for that amount of time, more or less all over the circle, but I was in kind of a hurry because I didn't actually have permission to go in this circle. I just went in there as quickly as I could and done what I could um, as fast as I could. But I would say, uh, in a, in a very general sense, 70% of those plants that I looked at were either snapped, crushed, or broken in one way or another, and it was predominantly at the very base. I went on to reiterate that my friend had been along to the formation shortly uh, after, and that he hadn't found this repetitive crushing uh, and consistent damage all over the formation. So I was asking him particularly to look for that consistency of damage you know every step sort of thing and that's what he couldn't find and I would have expected the flower heads to have been you know more damaged or consistently across when I look at the photograph of all those yellow flowers and compare that to the Golden Ball Hill photograph which we both agree was a genuine formation <coughs> 2005 sure. yeah. the flowers look they look pretty much the same. They look abundant and they've turned back up to the light and they don't look like, because, you know, those petals, they, they're, very, they're very fragile, aren't they? Once you, once you start walking on them or pushing them down, they, they, they break and they fall off. Yeah, sure. And I think when we look at, say, the, um, the replica of the Golden Ball Hill 2005 crop circle, when, um, when they attempted to reproduce that circle, even though they had a slightly more mature crop, so the, the flower heads were much more prone to damage and the flowers are much more likely to come off with board dragging. T typically, expert crop circle hoaxers, they'll keep their feet obviously off the ground as much as possible because they don't want their their whole thing is to fool people to do as little damage as possible because they like, for whatever reason, to make people believe that their stuff is in some way mysterious when it's clearly not, which to me is 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 a is a is an ugly distraction from the genuine phenomenon but it, it, it unless you've it, it you know the, 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 the ancient aliens test it was an interesting test but it's it's not exactly science um these are you know but but you you were easily able to show clearly i mean i remember the photographs the ones that you've produced there are some serious scraping damage it's really easy to see with that that it was mechanically produced yeah, sure. And I appreciate what you're saying, that the crop was older, because you can see that the seed heads have produced, so the flowers were less. But each time, it's different, depending on the age of the crop, the type of the soil, how compacted the soil is. For instance, if, for instance, the soil was really soft and sandy, there's a high likelihood that they won't actually break the stems, but they'll, the root bundle will just push itself out of the ground as they push the plant over. Um, to me, the ancient aliens test... It proved a lot in a sense, but we still have to be wary because there are so many variables and so many different types of conditions. So he seems to be backing off a little from his original statement. Now he's saying that the, you know, the ancient aliens test isn't so scientific and we need to be wary because there are a number of factors. And this is probably quite true. But if something is crushed with boards consistently, then we should reasonably be expected to see consistent damage and this is the point of the issue. I thought I should call Charles back and get some clarification on this. The reason I say that was not a scientific test because for it to be a scientific test we'd want exactly the same strain of oilseed rape in exactly the same field because soil conditions count, topographical considerations count, many things count. So an approximation of a test was it a good as a test as we could reasonably do in those circumstances and I stand by the fact that they failed the test um, because ultimately they were walking across oil seed rape in full flower fair enough it was smaller plants than the original circle appeared in but they broke 60 percent 60 to 80 or so percent of the plants as opposed to the original back in 2005 which really had zero to negligible damage almost nothing, nothing that I could find. And when I was walking over that circle, I was breaking badly everything I stepped on. You see, a lot of what Charles is saying now is what I find confuses the issue. Yes, he's right to point out, in my view, that 
the plants and the variables such as the soil and other conditions will affect results so we can never truly replicate results. But that doesn't mean that we won't find this consistent pattern of damage if somebody's been in there with boards. After all, Charles pointed out at the end there that when he visited the crop circle, he was actually breaking it with every step himself. In every single test circle that has been made by people as a commission or for TV advertising media, every time, however good they are at making a shape in a field, they break the plants or a very substantial proportion of the plants and or scrape the stems as they move forward, depending on how careful they are. So we agree that people walking on plants causes damage. When we visit a new formation, we have to make an assessment if we find any damage, if this could have possibly been caused after the event by people visiting. How can we ever do this with any scientific accuracy? As Charles points out, when people, when people visit crop circles, as you well know, they move in relatively predictable ways and they're usually walking down the centre of pathways, around the edges, peripheries, perimeters, key, key areas. There's, there's kind of, humans are very predictable, animals less so, obviously. And if that was the case, I would expect to see certain types of areas clearly damaged from foot trodding, um, not a general arrangement of damage over the entire formation. So what Charles is saying is, it, is that partial damage in some areas could be seen to be reasonably caused by people because humans are often predictable and walk in the middle of the pathways. I suppose that's reasonable, particularly if we find a lot of undamaged crop at the edges. It can only be considered a litmus test if you know that you're pretty much the first one there. See, and herein lies the problem. You've got to know if you were the first ones there. Now, this has happened on a number of occasions, and I myself have been privileged enough to get to some formations very early and be the first one inside. But for the most part, you can never actually guarantee it. And that raises doubt straight away. Going back to the original interview with Charles, did any of you catch this? T typically, expert crop circle hoaxers, they'll keep their feet obviously off the ground as much as possible because they don't want their their whole thing is to fool people to do as little damage as possible because they like, for whatever reason, to make people believe that their stuff is in some way mysterious when it's clearly not, which to me is 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 a is a is an ugly distraction from the genuine phenomenon. I asked Charles how people make crop circles while keeping their feet off the ground. Obviously, you can't you can't keep your feet off the ground, but you can you can in the sense you can do a lot less board dragging than you would necessarily do in some types of situations. You know, if you I mean, if you if you imagine stamping your foot down onto a onto a strip of crop, if you lift relatively high to step forward and push forward gently rather than just dragging it along the ground at relatively close, you're going to do a lot less damage. Well, this is where I respectfully disagree with Charles. It didn't look like that's what they were doing to me in the video. And after all, it's just worth noting, Gary, actually, that the people that made the ancient alien circle and numerous others, these are regarded as the best, the best yeah. crop circle makers, human crop circle makers on the planet. They get commissioned and flown all over the world to do circles for movies, TV, commercials, the whole thing. And they get well paid for it. So what have we discovered? Well, it's extremely difficult to tell if you're the first person to arrive at a crop circle. But if you do, and you find consistent crushing damage all along the stems and heads broken off and it's all smashed to bits, and it's a relatively simple design, then chances are you can say that someone's had a go with boards in the night. However, reports will conflict. One person will go along and visit a crop circle and say they found a lot of damage, and another person will go along and say, we didn't notice any damage at all, and there were bent stems and there was all sorts of things, and no one really ever gets anywhere. So tell us what you think. Charles, on the one hand, feels that the ancient aliens test is more comparable with what he found on the ground at the Cheryl Formation this year. Others believe that the Cheryl Formation more resembles the Golden Ball Hill Formation from 2005, which many people consider to be genuine. Let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe. There'll be more episodes coming soon.